You are listening to Praise Break on Joy Force International. God bless everybody. God bless everybody. This is DJ One. I'm like 17 minutes behind, but I like to say God bless to each and every person that's listening to us on the Join Force International.org. Everybody who's watching us on the DJ One TV. We're going to start off with a prayer and then go into our regular routine. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for helping me today, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for clearing up that confusion that I had, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, that listens to the Joint Force International.org and watches us on the DJ One TV, Lord. I pray for the Lipkowski family. I pray for the Santiago family. I pray for the Torres family. I pray for the Marti family. I pray for the Crespo family. I pray for the Vega family. I pray for my daughter, Melanie, for my son, Justin, for their mother, that you may bless them, Lord, that they may be saved. Once again, I pray, Lord, for each and every person that listens and watches the program. I ask you these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. want to start off by saying God bless to David. Silva, he was on the phone just a second ago talking about what happened, what happened, what's happening. Thank God we cleared it up a little quick. God bless to the David Silva family. God bless to my wife, my baby. I love you guys. God bless to my mother, Rosa Maria from Santiago, from Puerto Rico. <laughs> to my pastors, Diana and Ramon Crespo from La Casa de Fe, Jawe Jire, to my nephews, Sito and Esteban, Louis and Jeremy, to my niece, Gabrielle, to Rebecca, I love you, <laughs> to, to my daughter, Melanie, God bless you, to my son, Justin. Mom, did I forget anybody? Uh, I think I got everybody If not, they'll probably text me Well, we're about to start this program Today I have another special guest Coming in With her testimony We're going to start The program Right About Now You are listening to Praise Break on Joy Force International. I don't do this for fame. I don't do this for fame. You're listening to DJ One on Joy Force International. I don't do this for fame. I don't do this so the industry can know my name. I don't do this for fame. 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 I don't do this for the money. I don't do this. Say a couple dollars ago That was much easier to say A couple albums ago That was a piece of cake to say Before I got on the road Landing a record deal with cross movement Was not in my goal When I say that man I mean it But I'm at war with myself Due to the roars and the applause And the awards on my shelf Plus the law of more wealth Man I know when a storm is gonna melt Sometimes I'm torn and so I'm drawn back to the floors That I've knelt 
But the closer I get to God, the more I know that it's nothing All of my things and my achievements, middle of the dawn in the oven I burn them up, I'm hurting enough about the Joneses I cover And I hate the fact that I want more, but I can't have like Ocean's Eleven No I'm known in the public, not a king when I walk in your service I'm no better than my love, and I know that I'm only a servant If you see me out with chairs, don't tell me that I'm a king I already know that, but I gotta show that I ain't gotta wear diamond rings For a truth, man, I'm a Christian, so I gotta grind on my knees Basically pick up a basin and start washing some feet Even if you feel the beat, like some cops in the street Please don't tell me I'm the best, I'm trying not to compete Cause I don't Believe me when I say that I wanna be humble, I try If I can be honest with y'all, last week I buckled and cried When I was talking with some youth leaders, I crumbled inside And I told them that my number one problem was that I struggle with pride With the lights and the cameras, gotta keep it all in perspective Ten years from now, I won't be rapping, probably be some election Can't be hyped by the press clips, won't be right to give preference To the people that came into my life and seemingly more impressive Lesson number one, I can't be a slave to the hype. Number two, man, God forbid that I try to keep my name in them lights. Number three, I got the right to wear them baits if I like. Cause I'm watching Jesus, he was famous, but he was waving his rights. He was king, cause he came on a white horse that would not have been simple. If he came in on a donkey, I ain't gotta ride in no limo. None of this would be happening if I was shopping the demo. So I'm content if the car's clean and I can roll down. A window, gotta stay close to my kinfo. I wanna stay low to the ground. It's simple. You hear that tempo? Yeah, I'm slow in the gear. Henceforth, my life's in principle from the front to the back. Jesus Christ is the main feature. I'm just the opening act. So I don't do this for money. Do this for fame. I don't do this so the industry can know my name. Listen up, y'all. All flesh is as grass And the glory of man is as the flowers of the field The grass withers and the flowers fade But the word of the Lord endures forever I'm here and I'm gone That's why I take the time that I have To proclaim the one who is glorious The Lord Jesus Christ who is indeed God? Yeah. You are listening to DJ One on JoinForceInternational.org. This is DJ One, and tonight our special guest, ladies and gentlemen, we are inviting the sister Veronica Torres to please come up to the mic. And say hello. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless you too. So, what we want to do here is, you know it's Friday night. This is Praise Break on JoinForceInternational.org. We got the sister Veronica Torres about to give her testimony. Veronica is my wife. Woohoo! Gonna be um my mama baby. Woohoo! And um she's gonna give a testimony from right before what pushed her to accept the Lord to right before she came here to Massachusetts. Sister Veronica, take it away. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and praise break with my husband, DJ One. Um, I uh, say hi, shout out to Rebecca, uh, faithful fan. God bless you, sister. Um, so let's start. I I know my husband already prayed, but I like 
praying before I share the word of God. So, hope you don't mind. Father God, we worship you and we honor you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your son, Yeshua, ah, Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. You're holy. And you are our Father, our Creator. We thank you so much because we don't deserve your love, God. Thank you for rescuing us. Thank you for saving us. And thank you, God, because we can trust in you and we can depend on you. Lord, be you through us today. Glorify yourself in the program and glorify yourself. And may my testimony touch somebody. Touch somebody with your word. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, your son, Jesus. Amen. Um, praise God. So, um, if you notice, I in the in the in my church Casa de Fe Yahweh Jire, we use the names Yahweh and Yahshua, Yahweh for the name of God, and Yahshua for the name of Jesus, because they are the original names in Hebrew. So I hope you um, <laughs> I I like giving that explanation. I like giving that explanation before. I, t I share the word. Okay, so so I was the youngest. I was I I was the youngest of a boy and a girl. My mom was a single mother, and I was the youngest at home. Before being Veronica Torres. I was Veronica Marty. So um, I was the youngest of eight um, grandchildren on my mother's uh, side. So I was spoiled. <laughs> Basically, I was spoiled. Um, uh, ch my childhood wasn't easy. Uh, I suffered different kind of abuses, uh, especially a lot of emotional abuse. Um, it was it was kind of hard. I always had we always had what we needed, material, talking you know food and our house. We lived in the same house. I lived in the same house for twenty six years. Um, and my mom was a very hardworking woman, and um, so she could provide. My, uh, there was always my grandparents that helps us out. So we always had what we needed, thank God. Um, I was raised in a traditional church, a Catholic church. Uh, I used to go with my godparents. Uh, they're my, my like my second parents. Uh, they were neighbors and they were always, we were raised like a family. So I was raised and and uh as a young age learned to memorize some prayers. Um I knew that there was a God. I knew that he sent his son to save us, but I didn't really have a relationship with him. I didn't have an experience with him even though I used to pray every day. Uh, that kind was that was affected when one day I was I used to kneel before an image. That's what I what I knew, an image in a prayer, an image of supposedly that was Jesus. And um, so I used to kneel down and pray. And one day my mom goes to my room and says, "I don't know why you pray so much. You're always gonna be bad." So that really hurt me. I was a little girl, and that really hurt me. So I didn't dare to pray in front of people, in front of my mom at least, uh, for years. So it was hard. I wasn't raised with my father. Um, 
I spend the holidays and special times with my father, but we didn't really have a real relationship. So I had a hardworking mom that I barely seen because I really used to see and spend time with her because she worked. She used to work a lot. And then I had an absent father that used to be there just holidays. You know, used to take me out and stuff with my, my other sister and, and brother. So it was hard because I felt very lonely. I felt rejected. And other family situations made me feel um, very, very lo lonely and hurt and confused. Um, my mom lost her um, lost her job. She was uh, disabled, very young, and my brother and I were kind of happy because we we thought we got our mom back because she was a workaholic. And um, but it it was kind of hard because she was depressed and she kind of be in her own world and stuff. So, uh, I needed love, I needed attention, so I couldn't find it at home. I tried to find it in my friends and in boyfriends since I was young. Um, I tried to find it too in porn. I was introduced at a young age by an accident and then by a so-called friend well, when I was small, you know, and that really um, became an addiction and that really became something that really hurt hurt me, um, hurt my way, way of thinking, of looking at myself, and, um, and it became something that, how can I say? It became worse because I used to see things at home. They were trying to hide it, and then I used to find material at home. And then um, I used to watch uh, in secret movies. And then when the internet got home, my mom didn't know about it. So I, that was, you know, an open door, you know. And it was very hard. It became very, um, it was like on and off, like it wasn't always, it was like seasons was very bad and then I tried to like distract me or maybe I've had a boyfriend or something. So that was a secret that I kept for years, that after years I shared with my mom. But, um, and it was a secret that, um, it was very hard for me because I didn't want people to know because I was very ashamed and every time that I did it um, I felt very ashamed of myself and um, I struggled for years and that was one of the things that, uh, that affected me but another thing was our relationships very unhealthy relationships um, I didn't know what a healthy relationship looked like you know I've seen it my grandparents and some neighbors you know but I wasn't raised in the place that I I had an example of a healthy relationship so since young I had uh, one after another unhealthy relationships but the one that really kind of started it all and, and kind of really bruised me emotionally uh, was when I was 14 years old I met this bad boy, you know, I was a good girl, I didn't know about the streets, I was in a good neighborhood, and, you know, I was overprotected, and then I was taking some art classes, and I meet this handsome young man, uh, he was kind of a rebel, you know. Handsome so like saying, me? No, you're more handsome, puppy. Okay. So, so... I, you know, and, and I thought of myself like I I wasn't pretty enough. My self-esteem was always so low. I was always shabby. But um, I didn't know how beautiful I was, you know. 
because God created us beautiful. Every Amen. Woman, Amen. She every, is beautiful. Thank you. Uh, every woman is beautiful because, like my sister Rebecca says, God don't create no junk. So, so uh, my you know a young guy handsome he he paid attention to me he liked me so yeah something started i i lost my virginity at 14 and i put myself at risk when i told my mom i was expecting something different i was expect that was like a cry for me like i'm here you know pay me some attention and I was expecting her to say, "You're not gonna see him anymore. You're not going to that class anymore." It wasn't. It wasn't hard for me to keep me from seeing him. I didn't have a car. I was 14. I, I couldn't take public transportation. I didn't know how. You know. So it's like it wasn't hard for to communicate to cut. And I was afraid of my mom, so it wasn't hard. But after she smoked a pack of cigarettes. She said that it was safer for her to buy us condoms and bring us home. This is kind of like strong topic because people usually don't talk about this stuff. But my mom thought that was the right decision, but it wasn't. That started a really unhealthy and and this uh, terrible relationship. And then she brought him home and we started living together. Uh, supposedly because they thought I was pregnant or something. I don't remember that. But it was very hard because it was like if he had two wives, you know. It's like um, if he, you know, my mom told me once I'm 14 years old, like 15. We we were together until I was 16 or something. We were living together, and my mom said you have to please him in bed. I was like, okay. It's like I'm I'm not even like I'm still a teenager. I'm still you know, I'm, so I was, I was expecting something else from my mom. I was expecting her to protect me and to just give me more attention to, but no, she just let me have this relationship and because she thought that was the best. So it was very hard. Everything changed and it was like she did, um, she cooked, she cleaned and she bought stuff for him and everything and I did everything else. So it's like he had two wives. So, and um, he went out, he spoke with the girls, and went out with girls, and one time I remember that he just, you know, got dressed, went to a car that had two girls on it, and went out with them. And I was crying, I was very hurt, it's like, we're living together, we're a couple, and he's just going out with other girls, like that in my face. And my mom, I remember that told me, ah, you shouldn't be jealous. It's like, oh, okay, I shouldn't be jealous. And then when on another time, um, I get home, and um, she says, I'm with my mom. We got home, and she said, oh, he is there with a friend, and he told her that you are his cousin. I'm like, what? And she's like, um, and this is my mother talking. She's like, oh, and you're gonna go in. You're not gonna say nothing, and you're gonna keep walking. It's like, wow, he's in my house with another woman, and my mom is defending him, and I cannot say nothing. It's like things like that will really hurt me, and we really um, hurt my heart because. People think that abuse is physical abuse when, when somebody hits you, you know. But abuse is there's emotional abuse, it's verbal abuse too, you know. And I was emotionally abused by, by my mom and my uh, and him, and at that time this person that I was with, and it, it became very very hard. I started um, since a very young age because of the stuff that happened at my home. And my brother was very aggressive too towards me. So I started hurting myself since I was young. So it got worse when I got to, into this relationship. I remember that I cut myself seven times in my wrist, my left wrist, after a fight we had. Because I used to hurt myself 
because I thought I deserved punishment. So my mom noticed that when he was already almost healed. And she said, we need to go to the doctor. So I'm like, mom, that's say we don't know you to go nowhere so she brought me to a doctor to a psychiatrist and he said you need to leave that in that relationship that is not helping you you know so he sent me to the hospital so I could be um, and, and he told me that I needed to make that decision and it was very hard for me because when you start a relationship especially when you're young especially when you're intimate with that person you get attached you know in the bible it says that you become one when you get married so when two people are intimate they become one so i was young i was looking for attention love and and that i didn't find in my mom and my father and i thought i found it in this person even though he hurt me one you know over and over again you know i i thought you know, it was better than nothing because for the little affection that he used to give me, it was enough. You know, it, it make up for all the, the other bad stuff. What we're going to do right here, even though this testimony is very, very, very interesting, I want Veronica to take a breath for a second and we're going to play a tune. <laughs> Escúchame lo que voy a decir Solo será un minuto si tienes que ir No quiero digas nada simplemente escucha Perdona si en un momento te interrumpa Hoy hacen dos mil años de crucificado Mi cuerpo escupido y ensangrentado Llevo todas tus culpas sobre mi costado Para darte la vida eterna como un rey Surgen preguntas, ¿por qué no me escuchas? ¿Por qué no me miras? ¿Por qué no me abrazas? La hipocresía se acaba de dar Y dices que me amas Que has hecho un poco con tus razonamientos Has cambiado mi gloria por tus sentimientos A veces por las noches vengo y te despierto Pero ya no te importa la mente Pasas todo el tiempo hablando cosas malas Si la televisión las modas o la fama Has perdido la santidad que en ti brillaba Sabes más de novelas que de mi palabra Mi anhelo es usarte, que muestras mi gloria Y en mi pedazón que rebosa tu boca Que cambias el mundo cada vez que hablas Pues el tiempo se agota Lo 
You are listening to DJ One on JoinForceInternational.org. This is DJ One, and you are definitely listening to Praise Break on the JoinForceInternational.org. And we're going back to the testimony of Veronica Torres. Veronica? Thank you, brother. Amen. Um, well, I was sharing my testimony and... I had <laughs> a lot of issues. I already mentioned that I have issues since a young age, since I was a kid, a girl, tiny, um, with porn. And then I had problems with masturbation. Uh, in a healthy relationship since 14 years old and hurting myself since I was in elementary school. So I had a few issues. I had um, a like that's why I said I, my my childhood wasn't easy. So I was living with this this person, first person that I that I was intimate with, and um, I like I like I told you I hurt myself. My mom took me to a doctor. He said you need to. To leave this relationship we need to move out you're too young for this you know this is hurting you and um so he sent me to a hospital mental hospital and they gave me some pills thought I was awake there were people there that were so medicated they couldn't even stand they were sleeping all the time and I was hearing the stories young people there was uh, one young, he was younger than me, He maybe 12, 13, he drank uh, rat poisoning. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't drive, you know. And then a young man that he, I think he was older than me at that time, um, that he was so in love, he was so infatuated with his girlfriend, and they, he used to, he was really obsessed. He used to write her like hundreds of letters, and um, you know, and and he, I think they broke up, and he drank like almost a hundred pills, trying to kill himself. So it was like, I'm like, what, what am I doing here? Okay, it's like they're worse than me, you know, I. I what is this? I didn't try to kill myself. I just hurt myself. You know, so. But while I was there. I. I called him. And. Um, I told him, you know. I need you to get out of my house. I cannot do this anymore, you know. So. I remember I was in high school. And when I went back. I don't remember details, but I know it was a war between my mom and I. I had to move out of my house for a while. I had to live with my grandparents for a while. My mom was angry at me because I started to put my foot down in certain stuff, certain things, and started to speak up how I felt and and started to to say no. You know, I cannot do this anymore. So she she said um, I was being rebellious and you know with bad attitude and what um, what happened was that I was already angry at my mom I didn't know and this situation made me angrier you know she was abused too she had a really rough life and you know she did what she thought it was best for me um, she never. You know, a mother cannot do something to harm a child. Well, loving mother. My mom was a very loving mother, hardworking woman. Uh, she was a very good woman. Um, but what she thought it was right really ended up hurting me. But then again, I took my own decisions, right? So she thought I was being really rebellious and I had to leave uh, with my parents for a while. And so this relationship was on and off until we ended up breaking up. And it really um, hurt me because he didn't um, only hurt me by going out with other girls. He used to humiliate me and put me put me down, and you know I was always uh, to blame, and and you know I was dumb, and you know he used to put me down, and my self esteem was already low. He 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 helped get it worse, you know. 
So he never left my life because my mom became friends with his, uh, with whatever woman came to his life. So that was something that was made it worse because when you break up with something, you need healing. You need time to heal, and I couldn't heal because I was always seeing this person. So that was something that really impacted my life, and that started a whole chain of reaction, you know, like with unhealthy relationships. And um, so I was looking for love, affection, acceptance from unhealthy relationships, and it was one and after another. And my my mom used to say, "You like to to break men's heart." And she used to call me all kind of names and insult me. And, and I was like, what are you saying? You know, I'm just following my heart. Like the movies and the soap operas show you. You know, you have to follow your heart and all this stuff. And, and, and if they didn't work out, I didn't feel good. I just leave the guy and, and go with the next. If there was a next one, you know. But I didn't know that was wrong. I was just following my heart. You know, like they tell you. And now I know that you don't follow your heart. You tell your heart. You lead your heart. You tell your heart what to do. So I grew up. And then I started going out. When I was 18, I started drinking and going out with friends. Uh, so for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad crowd. Uh, it was people that my mom knew. Even though these situations happened, my, I was always overprotected, even when, when I was in college. So um, I started getting home like at 5 and 6 in the morning, and my mom was like, used to get angry at me. like, what time I, you got here? It's like at 5, at 6, so. And she used to look at me, but she didn't say anything. Like she started arguing with me, and then she's like, whatever, you know. She used to know where, who I was with, and all these things. So, um, and then I started going out with this group of people. They got boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. So, I was third wheel. So I got started going out with other friends, and you know, and like that. And but it was so tiring when I was going out. I really wanna. I was looking for joy and that love and affection that I have. And it became so boring. It became like uh, I just had to put a mask when I go out, smile, be the life of the party and all these things. But inside I was miserable. And then it was hard because I had to go out and have fun. Yes, have fun. And doing the same thing, the same music, even sometimes the same bands and play same people, the same thing. And then I got tired of drinking, especially one time when... Uh, a friend of mine uh, ridiculized me, insulted me because I didn't want to drink. I'm like, oh no, you're not telling me what to do. And then I stopped drinking. Because then I started to defend myself. It's like I was uh, letting people tell me what to do and being dominated by certain people. And then I started saying, no, I'm not going to do that. It's like, I'm not going to let people tell me what to do. So it was kind of like I started like, uh uh, so no, you ridiculize me because I didn't want to drink. Now I'm not going to drink and I'm going to make a joke about it, you know? So a lot of things happened. I started going to college and, like I said, going out. And, um, but something that marked my life when I was in high school was after all this situation with this person happened. Uh, with some medication and I've been in the hospital I met people that were Christians and they would talk to me about God and I would listen to them and the awesome thing was that they would come to me when I mo most needed right and I remember this young girl we weren't friends but we were in the same class and Giselle was her name she was a beautiful petite beautiful girl and she gave me this paper that I that I um, saved in my and I had it in my uh, in my wallet for like ten years or so because it said that you're like the amount of cyan that cannot be moved but it will stay forever and it was like signed by God or something it was very nice no very beautiful I didn't know what it meant 
but it was beautiful and that touched my heart um and until i met a daniel not you not my husband a daniel tall too handsome um he was he's the sweetest person i ever i ever met you Thank know you. he's still the sweetest person he's always with a smile he's um he's very kind he's very uh he like helping people he's the best friend you can ever have and he he really had a really rough life really rough and i liked him i'm like oh my goodness this this kid is so so pretty so so pretty so handsome and so happy and so nice but i noticed that he was friendly with everybody so i just we just became friends and and he invited me to a church so he after years he told me that he liked my personality and he said man the only thing he, she needs is jesus <laughs> but um so he invited me to a church and this was something that affected the life of some of my friends and i so they picked pe- uh, that day was horrible for me i was feeling horrible but then again when when they picked us up in the in the church van and went with some friends we went to the church it was uh iglesia botita de glenview in ponce so it, it was like a 2000 in the year 2000 so we went there everybody was so nice it was the youth uh service everybody's so welcoming and i don't remember what they said what the songs or whatever i don't remember nothing i just remember that i decided to accept the lord yeshua jesus as lord and savior and they made us because we were i uh, guess they made us uh dance uh, the a uh, dance of the chicken i don't know that was funny anyway so i accepted the lord and then after that we were with with the youth and we ate and we went to another person's house but the thing is we end up ended up getting in trouble with our parents and because we got home late um so okay. uh, they didn't let me go to the church again never again so so so, so, t- so when you came late that you was in the world it was okay but now that you were in church oh yeah wow. that always was it even and when i was in church slick. yeah yeah so we we got in big trouble. We got in big trouble because we got home very late, and there was a uh, uh, La Justa. So those are uh, uh, university uh, college parties going on. So the parents were worried because they thought we we could be hurt because of what people drunk and driving or whatever. So anyway, so they didn't let me go to church again. It was a Baptist church. So I tried the Catholic church again until I got disappointed. And then, like I said, partying, partying. Then I got to college. In college, I meet people that uh, believe in different things. And I got introduced to Wicca and magic and all these things, right? So I'm still on the same boat. Problem with porn, uh, dating, you know. Um, I didn't sleep around like that, but I used to date a lot. So. In 2003, I lost my my grandfather, the father of my mom. That really hurt me deeply because he was the strongest father father figure that I had. He was always there. Uh, he was an army person, and he 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 was an um, vet veteran, and he was very strict. But with his uh, um, with his girls, he was a sweetheart. So. It was hit me very very hard and then I had to be strong for my family hit me very hard and then in dating uh, this guy I I, the, I had a crush on a guy for years and then I started dating him and then because he was in the week and the magic uh, those spirits the gods or whatever he he was talking to they told him you know you need to leave her because uh, we have something else for you so that really hurt me so i was already hurt by the disappointments through my life losing my grandfather now getting dumped and it was like one thing after another and i hit rock bottom emotionally because i felt so lost i felt so lost and so 
and I didn't I didn't have an identity I didn't have real friends because my friends were the, my my dates friends and if I wasn't dating that person they were my friends no more you know so it's like I didn't have real friends I I didn't have an identity I was feeling horrible I rejected abandoned once again it's like everything I um that I did got me to the same place feeling abandoned and rejected so I remember one particular night that was dark was my light off in my room and I cried out to the Lord like the most the deepest cry out to the Lord I guess I, I was crying I, I was like Lord you know I was good when I was with you you know help me do something and um those few days I found somebody I saw a person from back and I recognized him I didn't remember his name but I knew I knew him so I ran to him I was like hi how you doing we you used to go to school together um we, we were not friends we had the same friends but we we're in friends so like, oh how you doing so I started talking to him and he invited me to the church the same church that I said to the Lord years before. Amen. So that day, he was going to pick me up uh, at a mall next to my college. So I got out of the college at the university, went to the mall, and I saw Passion of the Christ. I think it was Friday. Wow. That is a tremendous movie. And I remember that that really impacted me. And I called my mom, and my mom was waiting for me to take me home. I'm like, no, mom, I'm going to church. And she's like, you're not going, I'm already here, whatever. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm going to church. Put my foot down, and I was like, I'm going to church. And she was so angry. So I went to church, and I remember that the pastor started talking, Pastor Xavier Grepo. Yeah, the same name, the same last name as my pastor's here. And um, he started talking, and it was it felt like some like a blindfold came over my eyes, and I'm like, wow, I'm home, you know, I'm home. This is it. Thank you, Lord. And it's like, wow, all those questions that I had that supposedly magic and other stuff answer me. They were just lies. Now I was finding out the real truth about Yeshua, Jesus, the, the eternal life, that your love, that you were created with a purpose, that that you know God seeks, you know, He He, he wants a relationship with you. He 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 you don't find him. He finds you. He He tries to get your attention, you Amen. know. Amen. So Can I say something real quick? Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but um yes, sir. Um Sister Rebecca always sending a beautiful uh text on how you she says uh yashua is amazing through all the pain and suffering uh, yashua never left you and he started doing blessings for you and your husband Amen. god bless you love you we Rebecca, love you Rebecca. We love you. we're so happy that you uh watched the program and um I know it took me a little time. It took me a little time before I I, I read your text, but we got it. All right, <laughs> sister, back to you. Thank you, Rebecca. So, um, so I started going to church, and my mom was very angry, very angry. She then put my brother against me too. It, they were they didn't understand. They thought I was brainwashed and all this thing. So they they really. They really persecuted me. I had persecution in my own house. And I remember she tried to put my godparents against it. You know, it's like, she's going to church, whatever. She oh, no, she didn't. And she, my my godmother, she's like, uh, do you prefer her to be outside hanging out that you don't know where she's at? Amen. That going out to church that she's in a safe place. Oh, my goodness. She's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's usually how so, it is. It was the very Lord hard. Find somebody. Amen. It was very hard. My my family was against me, against it, against the idea. 
uh, they would say I was brainwashed and all this stuff. Well, they criticized me. They, uh, it was very hard, but I, it was worth it. And I want to say something because I already accepted the Lord, so I needed to to reconcile myself with Him. So I saw the Passion of the Christ on Friday. I went to the service, youth service, and then that weekend, I think it was. It was Holy Week, that what we call Holy Week, um, and they had a um, I don't know how you say it in English. They had a um, I don't know how you say it in English, but it's a it's uh, that you go for a few days. You take your pack your clothes, and it's like I a used camp. To know the word, but um, it's like a camp. I left it home like by a mistake. Cam- <laughs> it's like a camp or something. Uh, you go and then you uh, go to a place. And then you receive word, and you worship, and you stay there for a few days. So we went to this beautiful place. It's called La Gloria. It's called the Glory, and it's a few mountains. You see the mountains, and you see the sea far away. It's beautiful. So I remember that we were singing for the first time. I heard this song about shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord, and I forgot the words. So. It says about shout to the Lord and the the, the na- even the nature will worship you and all these things, right? So, listening to that song, being in that beautiful place, God, God touched my heart deeply, and I was so moved. So in that in that place, I reconciled with God. When we came back, it was my birthday. Instead of being with my family, I decided to go with them to. Re- So I give away uh, invitations for the services that week in Holy Week, and I bought my first Bible that I still have it. That was in 2004. So I reconciled with God in April 2004, and I pick out this Bible because it looked like a jeans, and I'm like, I want my Bible to look someday like your fav- like my favorite jeans that are all worn out, dirty. And but you love them because it fits you. And something in the pocket. So, <laughs> so that's why I picked this one, and that's how it is now. It has tape, it's dirty, and it's all but. And it has something in the pocket. <laughs> but it's been with me, and has my tears, has a lot of things written in it, and has a lot of memories. You know, so I reconcile with God. Then I will have my ups and downs, and my and I can give a lot of testimonies about that. But I had my my ups and downs. I had my battles. I still had my 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 addictions with the porn and all this stuff. Um, according I to Rebecca, ret- um, um, Retiro is a retreat. Ah, you're the best. Rebecca, thank you. Ret- retiro retreat. is retreat. Okay, thank you very much. I need to write that down. So, um, so oh, I praise you, God. So I had my ups and downs, my addiction still. And I was still not seeing God as the lover of my soul. As the source of love, I just still saw him like, uh, uh, you know, uh, I had to do things right because he's not, he's gonna punish me. But not the loving kind of God that protects you and bless you. He wants to take your hand and to do the process. I didn't see him like Amen. that. Amen. So, yes, I had three guys that I liked and I was praying. You know, I was starting church, really. I was starting with my relationship with God. I had to be focused on God. You know, from what I said, please, if you're young, listen to your parents. Don't rush into a relationship. And if you're young in the ways of God, if you're just starting a church, don't look for a relationship. Look for his relationship first. A relationship with him first, with God first. So I was praying, yeah, like three guys, three guys, and I was praying, and I stayed with a guy that wasn't in church and that told me that he was gonna make me love him more than God. 
that by itself is a re big red flag but I was so confused and I had a relationship with this person that became an obsession and it was very hard to break from that because that's what happened when we decide to be in a relationship with somebody and we decide to do something that we don't supposed to to make to try to feel a void inside we are risking ourselves to be addicted and assessed and dependent on that thing or that person in the bible says you know you're gonna walk over the fire and not get burned your clothes is not gonna get burned sometimes we think we can play st with stuff sometimes we think we can control stuff but it's not true if you're gonna control it you you wouldn't have to the need to do it and we think we can play with things and then it gets very hard to to live without it so it was hard it was very hard I stopped going to church sometimes and I went back and all these things and um, I praise God for the people there and it was one of my counselors she was very awesome uh, Nancy Giovanna and um, Samali Grepo they were they were very supportive with me they were very patient with me um, because when I started going to church I thought uh, it's I knew everything oh yes you know when they tried to teach me the word of God oh yes God revealed me that oh yes you know I was so fake I thought I was so honest and I was so fake that's another thing we we need to <laughs> listen to God and listen sometimes to people because we sometimes think about ourselves above you know we think that we're something and we're not and um so God broke me God really really had to break me so so I can understand that I wasn't I was trying to defend myself and I needed to to um, be more honest and open and let him work in me so the years pass a lot of things happened God saved me from my car accident and saved the people too they took a turn that they shouldn't have we went to court and everything that was another thing and God really God put his hand in that everything you know we didn't have to pay the car or anything God got it you know that was a really rough time um so I had to I had a job and I had to um quit the job to take care of my mom she, she had a, a surgery then I got um, bone tumor on my face. I had to take care of that. My family said, don't work. And I shouldn't listen, but I listened. I didn't work for, in that. Uh, I got into depression because I wasn't working. I wasn't doing nothing. So I was, I was in a really, really bad depression. Really, really bad depression. Like sometimes I wouldn't take a shower in three days. I was home meeting. Uh, watching TV and, and just in the internet and I felt so miserable I had everything I needed you know I didn't have to work for money because my family gave me money I had a car had everything I needed but I was so miserable I, I stopped going to church I stopped praying even my family that at first they didn't want me to go to church it was like hey you don't haven't gone to church you need to start going again because they knew the difference they, they saw the difference from when I was going to church having a real relationship with God that when I stopped, you know, because my identity is in God, I was loved, accepted, protected, and, and blessed by Him, you know, He is my joy, He is my joy, so when I stopped, Amen. it got me to really, really harsh depression, so I started hurting myself again, I went back to the hospital, I was 26 years old, I went back to the hospital again twice I was in medication I was like I gained, gained a lot of weight I cut my hair I had long hair and then I cut it really really short um, people noticed that I looked like a robot because I was so medicated my mom was so I was very nasty with my mom I had very nasty attitude with my mom I was so angry with her for all the stuff that happened in the past 
blast the depression I was in. I was believing the lies of the enemy. I was so tormented and so... Wow. It was so horrible. And uh, 2009... Before that, a few years before that, uh, like a year before, I think it was 2008, I'm not sure, I reached out to my father and I told him, you know what, I want to start a relationship with you, father and daughter relationship. So we started a relationship, he started sending me money, it's like I wasn't asking for that, but thank you. So when to to South 2009 came my grandma um, went to the hospital because she was she got very sick she got cancer nobody knew not even her so she died seven days after my my birthday in April my mom died two months later six days before my brother's birthday and um, so I had to I watched my grandma die and I saw my mom dead I had to be there alone until some other people came and I had to empty two houses my mom's house and a house that I lived my whole life I had to empty my grandma's and then my house my grandma's house we had to empty it out and clean it up we slept in her bed it was very hard and it was very hard seeing my mom go through that pain and um and then my mom died and I had to empty my house what was my house and it was very hard, very hard. Um, and I wasn't there with her. That was another thing that I had to deal with after. Because the last day I saw her, I was so tired, my back hurt. And it was also nice with her, you know. And the last day I spoke to her, I got sick, got fever and everything. So I didn't want her, to, I didn't want to make her uh, more sick or so that I said. I was so selfish that I just didn't care. She was sick a lot. She was in the hospital a lot. Like a few months before, I was with her like for a few weeks, staying over the hospital in paying a lot of money in, in parking because in Puerto Rico, you have to pay for parking in the hospital. And it was very hard. So um, she was always sick and it was like, I told her, I was like, I get angry when you get sick because I want you to take care of me. You know, it was so selfish and I wanted to be honest so I told her so that made her feel bad obviously so the last and the last time I spoke to her was Thursday night before she died she died on like, um, Friday morning and I spoke to her I was like oh yeah hi normal conversation well bye and I was in her bed watching TV eating you know and she died alone in her bed you know I thank God for mi mejor amiga my best friend Tania Suarez she's a nurse and uh, she was with her even she was taking care of her and she was even with her a few hours before she died and that really hit me because not only I lost the two closest people in my my life the two people that always took care of me I had no job I had no way to pay for the house because the house was still um, old you know you, the house was still had a mortgage and I lost everything from one day to another. My brother came from from here. He went to Puerto Rico with his family. And they started taking things out of the house. And when they took the the washer machine, I'm like, well, I guess I have to leave my house. I was so numb with the situations. I was so numb with the medicine, the medication, that... It was like I wasn't registering that I couldn't afford the house, but I had no place to go. So my brother, my sister law decided to take me here. So my mom died in June 26th and I was here in the United States July 13th. So my family started taking before I moved here, my family started taking the pills away, just giving me the pills when I needed it. So I started like waking up and uh, feeling better, you know. Um, and I really appreciate my friends that really uh, were there for me 
um, Geraldine, Elisa, Morgan, they, they took me out, they took me to eat, they, you know, they, they were there for me. And I cannot say thank you to everybody, but my family was very supportive too. They helped me out, they helped me with money and stuff so, so I can come here. They helped me to buy the plane ticket and everything. And um, my testimony is supposed to be until before coming to Massachusetts. So this is the end of part one. So it's kind of a sad ending, the first part. But it's worth it because um, everything gets better, praise God. But even though I had a, I, I didn't have a, an easy life, and it, you know, some people got it worse than me. Um, I know now that God was with me always. He protected me and from a lot of worse stuff that could have happened. And um, even though I made wrong decisions on the way, when I repent from my heart, He forgives me, forgives me. And even when I was trying to run from Him, He always put somebody. He always put somebody there to talk to me about Him. They'll tell me how much He loves me. So no matter your addictions, your past, what do you think about yourself, what are you doing, don't matter, you know, God loves you, and like, other people were there for me to tell me how much God loved me, I'm here to tell you now that God loves you, and he sent his son for you, because he created you to be with him for eternity, he couldn't live without you, so he sent his son for you, so he could die, resurrect, and now when you accept him as Lord and Savior, you can be with God forever, like he intended to be since the beginning. You know, he planned us because he wants to be with us. That's why he seeks, the, you know, he he tries to have a relationship with us. He tries, he, he has given everything for us. We just need to accept that and start a real relationship with him. Start talking to him, trusting in him. Run into him when we need love. Run into him when we need acceptance. Run into him with when we feel tired, when we feel angry. Run into him when we sin. Run into him because the more we run to him, it's time to run to the world and the stuff that really hurt us and leave us hungry and broken. When we start running to him, he starts fixing us and he keeps healing us and he keeps, you know, blessing us and telling us who we are so we don't have to believe the world who we don't have to believe not even what we think about ourselves so what can I tell you of the first part of my testimony I had a lot of regrets I had a broken heart I already knew the truth I already had experienced the presence of God he already had used me to talk to people but I went back and going back is not something that happens from one day to another it's something that starts in the mind you start believing the lies of the enemy you start letting go instead of running to God you start running back to the things you of the world the things the people and the addictions so I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are, no matter spiritually where you are, give a chance to God because He's looking for you. Accept Him. Accept His love. Accept His 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 friendship. Accept His His sacrifice. Accept Amen. Him because He's the only way. He's the truth and the way. He He's the only God. He's the true God. Because no witchcraft, no traditional prayers, nothing. They did, they did nothing for me. What I really did was a real relationship with my Jesus, with my Yeshua, with my God. Amen. You know, that's what really saved me. That's what really 
really oh, give meaning to me. He he gives meaning to my life. He is my identity. My identity is he in him. You know, now I can tell you he's the lover of my soul. He's my father. He's my everything. Okay? The first step to have a relationship with God is accepting as Lord and Savior. So do this prayer with me if you want to take that first step. You say, Father God, I recognize I'm a sinner. I repent for my sins and my way of living. I recognize and accept that Yeshua, Jesus, died for me. Your son died for me on the cross and resurrected in the third day. Now he reigns with you. Now I accept him as Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and heal me. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, amen. You did that prayer, that's your first step. Because God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself in you. He's not going to force you to be saved. He gives you the option. If you accept him, he's not going to leave you. But you need to keep, you need to read the Bible so you know what he says. What he says about you. You Amen. need to start going to a church that talks about him and, and Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit. You need to learn about him so you can learn who he is and who he says you are. So you can say, you know, I'm a daughter of God. I'm a son of God. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. What they do, I know who I am. I have a purpose. So no matter if my father and mother forsakes me, I know God never forsakes me. Amen. So that's the first step to have a relationship with God. That's the first step to having a identity so you if you're tired of being tired he's always there amen and i hope you don't wait until you're tired to 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 be tired because i've been there and that's horrible well the uh, veronica torres i hope to continue my testimony on another night i really appreciate um uh, my husband amen daniel torres tj1 I really thank him. Thank you for inviting me to your program. It's Anytime. been a blessing. Anytime, baby. Um, yeah. It's been a blessing to my pastor, Estramo Indiana Grifo, from La Casa de Fella Villere, and to my suegra, that we're going to see soon, Rosemary Santiago. Mwah! We love you, Mama. And Rebecca, thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, Rebecca is our sister um, from Casa de Fella Villere that we Amen. met through the radio. And she's a blessing in our lives. Yes, she is. And she already gave her testimony. So look in the videos there so you can see, watch her testimony. And our pastor, Daniana Crepo, her testimony too. Her first, the first part of her testimony too. So God bless you and stay connected to joyforceinternational.org. Stay connected to DJ1 TV. Yes. God bless you. You are listening to DJ1 on joinforceinternational.org. Yes, that was the testimony of Veronica Torres, my wife. God bless her. Thank you, Veronica, for coming to the program and giving your testimony. We still got, I know you have like a lot more. Yeah, that water is for you. It's been for you for a while. But I know you've been very busy speaking to those who are listening on the joinforceinternational.org and those who are watching on DJ1 TV. And just like I do to every guest that comes on the program, I'd like to grab your hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful evening, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for having Veronica, Lord Jesus, and having her give her testimony, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you may bless her and the baby in her belly, Lord Jesus. That you may bless our family, Lord. That through her, Lord, you will teach me all that I need to know, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for my pastors, Diana and Ramon Crespo, Lord. That you may bless them, Lord. I pray for Rebecca and her children and her friend, Lord. That you may bless them, Lord. That you may take care of them, Lord. And that you may... Help Rebecca, Rebecca take care of those that she, she with, 
which is part of her job now, Lord Jesus. Once again, I thank you, Lord, for my wife. I pray, Lord, that you may bless her on her way home. I thank you, Lord, for having her as my wife, Lord, and being the mother of my child, Lord Jesus. I ask you these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Veronica. God bless you. And I love I, you, baby. I love you, too. And I definitely will see you soon. This is DJ One, and you're listening to Join Force International. Dot org. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made this a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the us, the parties to man. Therefore, we need you to pure. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made this a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the arts to impart this demand. The fool we need you to be good. People got questions like, why am I here? Plus, what is my purpose? Why did he make me and place me on Earth's surface? What was his reason? And I know that he's perfect. I know that he made me so I could give him worship. But with my life and not merely lip service, to just live by faith, I've been purchased. So purchase, Lord, please help us to purpose. And our hearts to live God to get to the earth is passed away. Or until the day we pass away, you give grace to the humble, the proud, you cast away. We want to please you, our Father, we know we have to pray. We want to give you 24 hours. Not half a day, and with all I have to say, I keep it brief. I pray that you keep filling me up so I can feed your sheep. The world we live in is crazy, Father. We need your peace. We're saying, Jesus, please. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made this a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the arts to impart this demand. Therefore, we need you to pure. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made this a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the arts to impart this demand. Therefore, we need you to be loved. Uh, uh, this is a romance, Lord. You got the candlelight. We hear you whispering, teaching us how to handle life. The Prince of Peace, your footprints are on the sands of life. A loving father, you're teaching us how to stand and fight. We know your standards like high as the sky. So help us to say no to the deep sides inside, Lord. I could be hardy, I gotta die to my pride. Your eyes are always on us, it's like we high in a spy. But the difference is, you're examining. In our hearts, you're teaching us to stand because our stamina is short. The planet is hand and it's glamour and it's short. We yield to the demands of your commandments to endure and to be pure. Help us to watch what we watch, plus, watch what we say and every watch of the day. We don't want to fall in sin, so we watch and we pray. Plus, we stop and we say, Lord, you're we're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made us a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the arts to impart this demand. Therefore, we need you to pure. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand. You made us a party, the wonderful plan. You gave us the arts to impart this demand. Therefore, we need you to be Lord, Lord, I really wanna want you without all the stuff. And fall in love with your person, I wouldn't call you bluff. To live holy, our Father, we hear you calling us. We wanna go to the point in which you are enough. And that's hard stuff, I ain't gon' lie, but you will sustain us since we're attached to the divine. Plus, you gave us your word and print, and that is your mind. A revelation of who you are. So after this rhyme, I pray you worship God. He's so merciful, He's still holy, His character's not versatile. Obey, that's what I'm trying to say in a verse or two. We keep you first to shoot, yo. We're after your heart, we're not after your hand You made this a party, the wonderful plan You gave us the arts to impart this demand Therefore we need you to pure We're after your heart, we're not after your hand You made this a party, the wonderful plan You gave us the arts to impart this demand Therefore we need you to be You are listening to DJ1 on JoinForceInternational.org.
this is DJ Bond, and you're listening to Praise Break on Join Force, Join Force, Join Force. International, International. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, 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 oh. DJ, 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 one, 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 I'm ready to go, and I'ma tell the world what they need to know I slave to myself, but you let me go I tried getting high, but it left me low You did what they could never do You cleaned up my soul and gave me life I'm so brand new, and that's all that matters I, I ain't love you first, but you first love me In my heart, I cursed you, but you set me free I gave you no reason to give me new seasons To give me new life, new breathing But you hung there bleeding, you died for my lies And my cheating, my lust, and my greed and what is a man that you mindful of him? And what do I have to deserve his love? And try to make the moments last. Holding on to the past. But like a hero in a dream, Christ came and he rescued me. Now I'ma tell the world, tell the world, tell the world. I'ma tell it everywhere I go. Tell the world, tell the world. Yeah, I'ma be a world. But your care kind of keep coming And your love is so unconditional I like get butterflies in my stomach I got the old me in a rear view Got a new me, got a clear view That was so dead I couldn't hear you Too deep to sin to come near you But you drew me in, you clean me up So take me home, beat me up Before you do, just let me tell the truth And let these folks know that I done seen your love And it's everlasting, infinite It goes on and on, you can't measure it Can't quench your love, they can't separate us From the love of God, there's no estimate My face look the same, my frame never rearranged but I'm changed, I promise I ain't the same Your love so deep, you suffered and took pain You died on the cross to give me your new name Ain't nothing like I seen before, I got a beam of glow I was low down and dirty, but you clean me, Lord You adopted me, you keep me warm Ain't nothing like I seen before, I got a beam of glow I was low down and dirty, but you clean me, Lord You adopted me, you keep rocking me I'ma tell the world and ain't nobody stopping me Trying to make the moments last Holding on to the past But like a hero in a dream Christ came and he rescued me Now I'ma tell the world DJ1. Grace through faith. I talked to a cat the other day. And he was like, man, I really want to come to Christ, but I got to clean my life up first, get my sin. Grace through faith. I talked to a cat. Grace through faith. I talked to a cat the other day. Grace through faith. I talked to a cat the other day. Grace through faith. 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 I talked to a cat the other day. And he was like, man, I really want to come to Christ, but I gotta clean my life up first, get my sins together. I told him, I used to think that way too. I thought I had to change myself before I could come to Christ. Christ changed me. 
Let me tell you my story starts like this It's 546 in the morning Tossing and turning, chest burning Servants in my head keep reoccurring Having visions in my head of a kid Crying at the feet of the father for all the wrong things that he did Now I'm sweating in my sheets, can't sleep My mind keeps telling me I'm six feet deep Don't remind me, even though I'm still alive I can't tell, the way I'm living my life I feel I'm going to hell God, they telling me I should accept you That you had to leave the world cause the world left you Reason I can't change, like a mystery to me So I make believe it really is a heaven for a G Even though they say you love the world so much You shed your blood, God I feel I'm too messed up for love They tell me come as I am, but I smell like smoke My whole life's full of sin cause it's all I know The Bible told me that you died for my sins If I believe you Christ, save me from the end But I'm scared to ask you to save me My heart's so evil, I got thoughts that's full of hatred Jesus, will you take me as I am? I know the way I'm living is wrong, but I can't change on my own. Trying to make it alone, I wonder how could you love me when my life's so ugly? But you came down and died for me. Will you take me as I am? I know the way I'm living is wrong, but I can't change on my own. Trying to make it alone, I wonder how could you love me when my life's so ugly? But you came down and died for me. Will you take me as I am? Yeah, we say by grace through faith. Not works, ain't nothing you can do, ain't nothing I can do that could get us this great salvation that we got, man. It's only Christ. So if you feel like you gotta clean yourself up before you can come to Him, forget it. Just come to Him. He'll take you as you are, and He'll change you from the inside out. You are listening to DJ One on JoinForceInternational.org.
inside a subconscious place of his own mind Suppressed by his ego, arrogance and pride His journalism narrative, depiction of embarrassment Anger and addiction, life's tragedy of fiction It's like a graphic novel, so vividly descriptive Written with penmanship, reminiscent of prescriptions Trying to make sense of it A composition to power of unknown sentences A tragic labyrinth of moments of indifference As if he opened Pandora's box and climbed into it Bound by the chains of emotional imprisonment Filled with empty satisfaction, he's tired of living with Finally sought the help needed, but took initiative Wants his life back, but he's still can't envision it Wishes that his wife and kid could come and visit him Chris would kill me if he found out that I was reading this Yeah, it's the truth fam I spit my heart in the booth fam You man now about the struggle E16, where certain man never see 16 Done 316, that's why I'd rap about 316 Cause the devil got his demon showing 366 Lord help me, show me the ropes Your holy, so show me the ghost The night talking about the rose Don't care for the whips and chains Brothers Put your ones up Put your ones up this is DJ yeah, Ruth, and you're listening to Praise Break. I'm Joy Force, International, International. Where certain man never sees 16, John 316, that's what you're talking about, 316, got it. We run! Put your ones up. Put your ones up. Victors are on the beat. Yeah, it's the truth fam, I spit my heart in the booth fam You man now about the struggle E16, where certain man never see 16 John 316, that's why I'd rap about 316 Cause the devil got his demon showing 366 Lord help me, show me the ropes 
Your holies to show me the ghost And I ain't talking about the rose Don't care for the whips and chains Brothers might as well still be ripped and chained Cut they switch the lanes Look around like switch the blame Then I stop and I look at myself He without sin Throw the first stone I throw the book at myself This is a This is DJ1 And you're listening to Join Force International.org You know how we do It's 10 minutes 12 I like to start off with saying Once again thank you to my wife Veronica Torres For being a guest on my program And giving her testimony I like to thank each and every person That listens to the Join Force International.org Internet radio station i like to say thank you and God bless to each and every person that watches us on the DJ1 TV, which is located on bambooza.com. DJ1 TV, internet TV, you heard? Big shout out to David Silva, the big CEO from Spring Hill, Florida, to his family. Big shout out to my daughter, Melanie, my son, Justin. Big, big shout out to my baby in my wife's belly. <laughs> it's always a pleasure being here every Friday night, you know, doing what we normally do on this program, whatever, you know, the Lord leads us, leads us to. A big shout out, and I love you to my mother. Rosemary Santiago Big shout out and I love you To my sister Diana Crespo If I haven't reminded you yet My wife Veronica Marti Torres Veronica Torres She was Veronica Marti (laughs) Veronica Torres has her program On Monday nights From 9 to 10 p.m. Every Monday night My brother-in-law Ramon Crespo has his program on 104.9 Redentor on the FM radio station from 6 to 7 p.m. Then Wednesday night, uh, Esteban and Ramoncito Jr., their program called What's the Word on Wednesday nights from 8.30 to 9 o'clock on the joinforceinternational.org. And then their mother, my sister, and also the pastor of La Casa de Fe, Jawed Jireh, Diana Crespo's program is on Wednesdays from 9 to 10, Mujeres de Guerra. And then on Thursday nights is my mother, Rosemary Santiago. The name of the program is Sobre, Sobre Alas de Aguila from 9 to 10 p.m. on Thursday nights. And you know the regular DJ1 Praise break on Friday nights from 10 to 12 a.m. It's been an awesome night. I want to thank the Lord for a beautiful night. I want to thank the Lord for everything that, uh, that's that been going on in my life. You know, I'm getting married soon. I'm married already legally, but we're going to have what we call the blessing, which is a nice big wait- wedding reception. we already been married. But um, we have a wedding reception, which, you know, there's nothing like being blessed by the Lord when you get married. Nothing, nothing like being blessed. I mean, it, a wedding is not a wedding unless you're getting blessed in, in, in the temple and you're getting blessed by the Lord. I um, definitely... would say that it's been awesome pretty soon you know I'll probably be giving my testimony I've give, I've given a testimony before you'll find it on my DJ1 TV which is at the com. but I'm more than sure I got much more to say much more testimony I always pray for each and every person out there we want you to tune in until the day you decide you want to accept the Lord keep 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 watching, but we want you, and keep listening, but we want you to accept the Lord. That's the whole, that's 
That's what I believe is my ministry. Is to get those who have a hard time or just, you know, they hear the word and they just keep pushing it aside. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to get you. Because the Lord wants to take everybody with us. And that is for sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful evening, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for me. I pray, Lord, for my mother, my daughter, my wife, my sister, her husband, my nephews, my niece. I pray for David Silva and his family, Lord. That you may bless them, Lord Jesus, in every way. I pray, Lord, a big special prayer for the Lipkowski family, Lord. For you know that they allow us to do their program, to do your program, Lord, here in their office, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for putting it in their hearts to allow us to do the program. I pray, Lord, that you may bless their parents, their child, that you may bless them, Lord, that you may bless their business, Lord, that it may triple in whatever it is, Lord Jesus. That you may bless them in every way, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that they keep watching the program, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, for the listeners and the viewers, Lord, that they may accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord. And I Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to keep praying for them, Lord, until they finally decide to make that choice, Lord. I pray for Rebecca, Lord, and her children. I pray, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, that is part of the Joint Force Network. So although I don't know them personally, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you may bless each and every one on each and every one of their programs, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being part of the Joint Force Network. I pray, Lord, for each and every ministry from La Casa de Fe, Jawajide, Lord, that you may bless our pastors, Diana and Ramon Crespo, that you may bless us through them Lord Jesus that you may show them so they can teach us Lord I pray Lord for Veronica's family Lord out in Puerto Rico and here in Massachusetts Lord that you may bless each and every one of them Lord I pray Lord that I if I've forgotten anything Lord Jesus that you may put your hand over them Lord I pray for the sick I pray for those who can't afford hospitals. I pray, Lord, for those who have nothing, Lord, that they may find you, Lord, on their way, Lord Jesus. I ask you these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we got like two minutes. And um, Esteban, tell them who this is and tell them what this is. You are listening to DJ1 on joinforceinternational.org. That's right. This is DJ One on the Joint Force International dot org. Once again, a big shout out to the David Silver family who are out in Spring Hill, Florida. You know, this is DJ One, and I'm broadcasting live from Holyoke, Massachusetts. The temple that I go to is called La Casa de Fe, Jawe Jire. That's the House of Faith, and it's located on five zero eight South Street. In Holyoke, Massachusetts. If at any time you're uh, in the area, we would definitely love for you to be part of our services on Tuesdays from 7:30 until the Lord says. On Fridays from 7:30 on, and on Sundays from 11 o'clock in the morning on, to when the Lord says it's time to call it a day. Once again, I thank you and I pray for every person that listens to us on the Joint Force International dot org and watches us on the DJ One TV, which is located in bamboza dot com. 
So remember, joinforceinternational.org is not only a ministry, but we're a family. God bless, and we love you. You are listening to Praise Break on joinforceinternational.org. God bless everybody. Yes, yes, and if you're watching us now on the DJ One TV, once again, I repeat it all the time because we love you and we want you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the whole reason for this program. I want to thank once again everybody that watches the program. We'll see you next Friday, God willing. Love you all.